It's warm and it's sunny. Hi, I'm Chanel and my pronouns are they, them, and theirs. I'm a knitter, spinner, and designer living in New Jersey. This is episode 35 of the Piper Nell podcast. Today is April 14th, 2018, and it's... It's been a long winter this year. It's finally spring and I'm wearing shorts for the first time in 2018 so far. Even yesterday I was, I wore my coat out of the house and by the middle of the day I didn't need it. But finally, hope hopefully the heat sticks this time. Um, that doesn't go well for knitting, but we'll see. So I have a lot for y'all today. So let's get right into where you can find me on social media. I am Piper Nell most everywhere on the internet as P-I-P-E-R-N-E-L-L. -L. That's my Ravelry, my Instagram, Facebook, um, if you're the Facebook type. And on Ravelry, there is a Ravelry group called the Piper Nell Podcast, where I will post show notes for each episode so you can see what I mention. Um, and I attempt to maintain chat threads where we can discuss specific topics like spinning, knitting, wh whatever you're working on, just chatting. So um, let's jump right into news. The I want to first announce the sock scuffle, which is taking place at Yarnia, my local yarn store, and also my workplace. So I am one of the team leaders and I am one of the co-captains of Team Bottoms Up. The other inferior team is Take It From The Top. I'm just kidding. So you can, um, the whole idea behind Sock Scuffle is that we are doing a sock competition where and um, competitors get a point for every sock knitted, not a pair of socks, a sock. Um, and they choose a, they choose a team I, team bottoms up is toe up socks. Team uh, take it from the bot, take it from the top, um, because that's <laughs> team take it from the top is top down socks. Um, but if you join either team, you are welcome to knit your socks anyway. It's just expressing your preference, if any, and you know, indicating which team captains you like more. I'm kidding. So. If you're in the North New Jersey area, you should check out Yarnia if you haven't and uh, join the Sock Scuffle. And the next thing I have, I know I have not been hosting stuff um, and I do want to um, host something and build community. Um, I just haven't really been at capacity lately, but I would really like to do a spin along and um, some of the comments on my previous episode, which is all about spinning, would back that up that I think people would be interested in it. So I want to do a spin along during the summer, uh, maybe going into the fall. Um, and my initial idea is a skein party. So you would get one entry per four ounce skeins and you can combine many skeins as long as they total four ounces. And if you spin larger skeins like eight ounce or even bigger, I'm not sure if yeah, yeah, people make like jumbo jumbo bobbins, I'm sure. Um, and those will get you multiple entries. Um, so let me know what you think of that. And I'll start, I'll noodle on that some more. But that's all I have for updates. I haven't had a lot of design mojo. It, it, it This is catching me at a point where I'm finding my design mojo coming back. Um, so you'll be seeing more design news from me soon. But let's jump straight into knitting. <laughs> So my first project is a whip, and I just mentioned that I didn't have a lot of design mojo. This is the only thing I've been designing since January. I mean, yeah, I haven't put out a pattern since my, um, since my Gila case scarf. Yeah. Uh, I, I think spinning took over a lot of my crafting energy, um, outside of, like, my day-to-day -day work. So... I, I'm glad to have had this project at least. So this is the state of my Colorwork sweater. As you can see, it is mostly done actually. And I finally decided on a name for the sweater. It's going to be called Druid Circle. Um, it's a very, it has, it features a, le a leafy motif colorwork um, on the yoke. 
and then a corresponding motif on the sleeve cuffs and it is knit in okay so let's go over the yarn first this purple red is blue moon fiber arts wubu which is a bamboo merino not um bamboo merino blend in the colorway bittersweet and it's a nice tonal it gives the plain stock net enough interest without really overwhelming the color work um and then that's actually listed as a sport weight my contrast colors what um cc um contrast color one is the white and uh and the numbering doesn't matter so one contrast color is the white and the green are the same yarn. They're both North, North Light Water Street DK. In um, the white is Snowflake and the green is Salt Marsh. And it's it's really nice grass green. Um, so Water Street DK is a merino and cashmere blend. So lots of merino going on in this sweater. Um, but I feel like the the yarns are kind of just cla are classic enough to hold up to a nice color work pattern. Um, Water Street DK, as as a cashmere blend and has a high percentage of cashmere, is usually out of my budget range. So I wrote the pattern with the intent that you would only have you could have small amounts of this color work and you could use a luxury fiber with if you indulged in and in, in you're on a budget like me. Um, so some techniques that went into this project so far, I've talked about the color work yoke before, so I'm not going to talk about that much. Um, since I showed this, I, I think I have finished the body, finished one of the sleeves, and I'm on the second sleeve. Um, so I'd say I'm like, I'm like 80% done. So I'm a masochist, and this hem, this body hem, look, it's so pretty. That's a tubular by enough. Um, I'm not going to require that i mean i a pattern writer can't really require you to do any technique um i will put that as a suggestion in the pattern to do a tubular bind off because it's so damn pretty um but i know not everyone is going to want a kitchener like 200 stitches like i will like i did um but isn't it so pretty tubular bind offs are so pretty and they just look so nice with one by one or this is one by one twisted ribbing and I also use one by one twisted ribbing and a tubular bind off on the cuff. So if you notice, the cuff has a thumb hole. Um, and that's basically just a large buttonhole. So you cast off a few stitches and you cast on some stitches using a short tail cast on. I'm still playing around with bind off and cast on um, combinations. I For this thumb hole, I used uh, the Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off. Um, for the bind off and then the alternating cable cast on and they I think they they match pretty well um, and then when I wear them they're both I chose them for stretchiness um, because this is a fairly close fitting cuff so they do have to stretch quite a ways to go over your hand um, but I'm I'll, I'll play with combos um, and if anyone has any suggestions for good matching stretchy stretchy uh bind offs and uh bind offs and cast ons that they like to use for say a large uh buttonhole or a large thumb hole um just send me send them my way i i know quite a lot but i haven't you know been able to pair all of them up and see them in practice so i'd always appreciate some input on that and then the last technical note i have on this sweater is that as I am writing up the pattern as I speak, um, I ran into some technical issues this week as I, I really started the pattern file last week. Um, well, one, I don't know how to grade a sweater pattern. Um, I'm, I'm figuring that out. Um, it's, it's math. I can do math. But also, uh, the way I write my patterns, I use... A software called La uh, LaTeX, LaTeX. I pronounce it LaTeX, um, and that is the software that I used to write uh, tech reports when I was in undergrad. Um, and I found that there was a knitter equally as nerdy as me, um, and she wrote a um, a package for that software to uh, create knitting charts, um, and it. Her her code really was meant to create charts focused on cabling or lace. 
So I, um, but not really multicolored color work. I've done a black and white color work chart in that that was for Gila Case. Um, but this involved three colors. You don't need three color stranding at any point in this pattern. It's just you do switch colors. Um, so I actually, I, I'm not super, she's way more experienced with the software than I am. I only use it really for like basic typesetting. Um, she, having written an entire package, is obviously way more experienced than I am, so I messaged her on Ravelry. Um, Ariel Barton, thank you so much, you're awesome. Um, and she replied to me really quickly with a really thorough um, solution in the code for how to, how to extend the capabilities of the package so that I can, you can type out multi multicolored color work charts. So that's been cool. I'm still playing around with it. I, I know that there are way easier and intuitive pattern writing software that is meant for writing knitting patterns and crochet and crafting patterns. I'm taking this more as a personal challenge to myself, so that's me. Plus, at this point, I've kind of developed my form uh, format for my patterns that I like and I want to stick to it. So yeah, uh, maybe I'm shooting myself in the foot as an early designer. Anyway, that's it for the Colorwork sweater. Hopefully it will be done next time you see me. Next project is a mofo. It is mostly finished. Um, I bound it off on yesterday morning over breakfast and it is an excuse me shawl i don't think i ever showed this on the podcast because i cast it on a couple weeks ago when i was visiting grad schools um in the airport or on the plane um and i was yeah i was too drained to podcast so this hasn't made it on the podcast before and now it is mostly finished but this is my excuse me it is of course the excuse me shawl by Stephen West, um, and it is bigger than the, I did just work more repeats of the pattern, so it's probably larger than his is, but also I'm way smaller than he is, so <laughs> judge the size how you will. Um, it is a two color brio shawl with some cool asymmetrical shaping, and I used four colors in total. I've seen really cool scrappy versions of it, um, or sing even very graphic two color high contrast versions of it. I had a skein, uh, I had two skeins of highly contrasting yarn that I knew would look great in two color brioche. And then as I dug through my stash, I noticed I had accumulated two more skeins that were a different combination. I thought they went well together. So this is the dark color side, has the orange and green are dominant. And then the um, light color side, you, I, uh, both light colors I used were speckled. So I actually, I started with full skeins of each color and this is a good size. I'm glad I didn't go any bigger, but I still have plenty of yarn left over. So the first color combination are these two yarns. These are my leftovers. This orange is... Um, from Prin Bros Yarn Company in their Cosmic Helix uh, base. All of these yarns are 100% Superwash Merino. This is their Blood Orange colorway. And then this is the Supernova colorway, which is a speckled um, with very nicely coordinating orange speckles and some light neons and darker speckles on a cream base. So I thought that was a really nice combination. It had been sitting in my stash and I hadn't used it since I got it at uh, Rhinebeck 2016. <laughs> so then it's Fateful Partners were these two skeins. This is a uh, Wolmiza um, Pure Superwash and it's a weird different colorway so it's one of a kind. But it's this nice um, rich greens and some tans. And then its color, its light color was a Toad Hollow skein um, from, I got it at the New Jersey Fiber Festival. And this is their corn silk colorway on their Drusilla base, which is a two ply, super 100% um, merino wool. 
Yeah, so I thought these were all really good matches for two-color brioche. I feel like brioche in general is more forgiving of mixing bases, so I could have been fine if one of them was like a single, um, a singles yarn or one of them had some nylon in it. I was, I haven't blocked this yet, so, but I think in brioche you shouldn't be worried about the yarns growing differently or something like you might in, when you're mixing yarns for a sweater or something. So I am looking forward to blocking this and seeing how it grows. If anyone has advice for blocking brioche, I don't know how aggressively to block this. I want to keep it fairly squishy and I mean it's a good size right now. I just, I do kind of want the stitches to settle a bit so I'll just see how the fabric behaves when I block. And that's it for the excuse me shawl. I'm gonna toss that over there. The next two projects I have are some socks that I've been working on. As I mentioned, the sock scuffle. Um, these were begun too early to count. Um, and one pair I have actually, I finished a while ago while I was traveling for grad school and bound off. And I've actually worn them once and washed them once. So you get to see a bit of how this yarn has been holding up. These are probably the most comfortable socks that I've knit. I have to say. So here they are. The yarn is Drops Fable, their self-patterning uh, sock yarn. It is a wool and nylon blend. It feels a lot like regia or opal, so it's not the softest wool, but it's very sturdy. And I don't mind scratchy wools. I don't, and I love woolier wools. So this felt so nice and warm and comfy on my feet. You, you can see a little bit of fuzzing, but I'm also harder when hard on my socks when I wash them. So these have been washed in a machine, in a machine both times I go to a laundromat and washed and dried in machines. It was washed on gentle cycle with my delicates. Um, when I wash my hand spun, I'm not hand spun, I love hand spun socks. When I wash my hand knit socks, I wash them with my regular socks. Um, I throw them in a, in a lingerie bag, a large lingerie bag, and put them in with my delicates and my sweaters, knits, um, and they're totally fine. Also, putting all your socks in a lingerie bag means that you don't lose them in the machine. And then I did dry them on with heat. Um, not the highest setting, but yeah, they hold up pretty well and I like my socks to felt a little because it does make them feel a little more sturdy. Um, the pattern that I used, it's not really a pattern. I, at this point, I have a two at a time sock recipe and the closest thing to a pattern write-up I have is the handout that I use when I teach two at a time socks. If people would be interested in me publishing a, this recipe as a pattern, let me know. I'm, it's the kind of thing where I'm not sure, um, if people are interested in my recipes um because it's not really like a design so if you like the way i write techniques and you would want to see that in the recipe i guess let me know um so yeah um the next pair of socks i have so yeah that was toe toe up two at a time my normal um my normal sock technique <laughs> it's become and it was really a mindless project for me which is great um, this next project is really unusual for me in terms of sock knitting. So here's one sock. And here is the second sock in progress. Yeah, I am knitting socks one at a time. They're also top down. So the complete opposite of the last pair of socks. But it's not pretty. So this pattern is Rumpelstiltskin by Very Busy Monkey on Ravelry. Um, it is this nice lace lace but not too lacy pattern with some twisted stitches for flare and um the yarn that i'm using this beautiful beautiful gold is from molly girl yarn um who is a local new jersey dyer she had a trunk show at yarnia and this is what i got at her trunk show um her base is baseline it's merino superwash merino nylon it's it feels like a great sock yarn so far um i'll get back to you on how it wears um, but it's the colorway, the colorway is House of the Rising Sun 
all of her colorways are named after are named after songs and musical and her even her yarn bases are named after musical terms she's I, I really like her thing how she's all about the music so yeah that's going really well finished the first sock um yeah I did weave in my ends good for me and then I'm on the gusset decreases of this um, of the second sock so yeah I would highly recommend this pattern it had been on my queue for at least a year maybe two years um, I had my eye on it when I first started knitting socks and I fell in love with the lace pattern it's just I never really had the right yarn for it and now the sample was shown in a gold yarn and I was so set on getting a gold yarn because Rumpelstiltskin gold like can you think of anything else um and then I saw this at her trunk show and I was like it's a match made in heaven and then the last project that I have to talk about um I don't have to show you anymore I do have photos so after I give you the brief details I am just going I'm going to show you pictures in a little slideshow so I knit an interlude shawl, interlude by Janina Kalio, that's the pattern. And the yarn that I used was Manos de Uruguay uh, Alegria in their sand colorway. So it's this nice taupey, um, taupey semi-solid. And I knit it on commission for someone, which is why um, they've already received it. So that's why it's not with me anymore. And I just wanted, I guess I wanted to talk really briefly about the process of me choosing that color um, because the when the person approached me about a commission she showed me the dress that she wanted it to match this was a dress that was going to be worn to a wedding and I did pick out some yarn but then as I sent her a picture I'm like wait these like this taupe um, the dress is taupe the shawl would be taupe um, taupe is a really hard color to match um, I mean, most colors are hard to match uh, through photos. Taupe, I feel like, is even more because there are so many shades. It could skew too warm. It could skew too cool. And if I got the wrong yarn, then she would... No one would be happy. So, so I had her come into the store at Yarnia, and we were able to pick out a nicely matching yarn in person. So that's a little tidbit that I'm learning for future projects like meet the person in in meet in person whenever possible um so yeah I'm going to take a quick break drink some more coffee and you'll see some pictures of the interlude shawl in this little break and I'll be back with spinning some spinning. I've been doing a better job of balancing knitting and spinning. I think um, it's still kind of week to week. One week I might do more knitting, one week I might do more spinning, but I feel like I'm getting the kind of, I'm spending the enough time with each craft that I feel accomplished with both. So um, the first game that I want to show you is um, this jumbo skein it is about it's 164 grams which is about uh six ounces and no six yeah yeah six ounces a little under maybe five ounces and so this is a skein that i'm calling Cer circe's wrath it the fiber that i used um this was a multi a braid of multicolored dyed top from Fabgis fibers it was a bfl silk blend um and the colorway was named Circe and I love the colorways and I think it's so pretty for this dark deadly sorceress um femme fatale figure and then if you notice the yarn is a is a multi and then it's a two ply it's a multi one ply is a, is spun from the multi braid one ply is spun from a semi-solid green and that green was from Sweet Georgia in their Superwash BFL base um, named Fourth and Vine. And I mean, that didn't really factor into the name too much. The color green 
just reminded me of envy and wrath um, and just bad feelings, all toxic feelings all around. So this game is Circe's Wrath. And it's about, uh, there's about 270 yards in this game. Um, the grist comes out to about 1.65 yards per gram, which is some pretty normal for my DK weight spinning. I find that that's becoming my default. And then I actually, re new to me, I got a handy dandy little uh, wraps per inch tool um, that I got while I was traveling to Boulder. There was a, not Little's local yarn store, big local yarn store called Shuttles, Spindles, and Skeins. Um, they have every, as the name implies, they had everything. So I got, I was good and I picked up a tool that I knew I wanted. And then I got a couple of books, small books. Um, one was actually a history book and then the other one was an issue of Ply Magazine. Um, and I haven't really spent enough time with those to give book reviews, but I think next episode will be a book review episode. So, so I measured the wraps per inch and I got 13. So that is on par with the standard um, DK weight. And then I got a mini skein. So when I split the, so when I spun up the two braids, I purposefully spun the multi, the multi fiber, the multicolored fiber into a thi uh, thicker single than the green. So I had a lot more yardage of the green and so I took the leftovers and I actually tried out some chain plying and it's it's not the it's not the most even. Um, I'm still I, I like it. It turned out to be pretty balanced at, especially after I washed it. Um, I do want to work with this and just try it out. Yeah, you can still see some kinks, some places where the plies are in uneven tension. I'm not sure if chain plying will really be my thing. I need to try it out more. Um, but anyway, this mini skein has about 72 yards. It's 42 grams, which comes out to a gris of 1.71. So that it is actually thinner, even though it's a three ply, it is thinner than my two ply, than the two ply skein. Um, because that single was so fine to begin with. Um, when I measured the wraps per inch, it was about 15 wraps per inch. I'm not sure how I feel about the system of wraps per inch as a whole. It's so subjective and I find I don't trust my measurements, but I, I don't know. So that's, um, that's that, that was that spinning project. Both of these games are finished, um, and are going into my personal stash. And then I still have a couple of projects that are, um, obligations from my crowdfunding project. So, uh, the first one I want to show you is a mofo. I haven't finished and washed this yet. This skein I'm calling Stormy Skies. So the fiber is from Three Waters Farm, and the colorway is just simply called Gray and Teal. It's a BFL nylon blend, so if I spun it thinner, it would make a great sock yarn. Um, it's a two, I, I did a two-ply. This skein has about 188 yards to a um, 110 grams. So it's actually turning out to be kind of a, it's a, it's on the lighter side of DK, more of a sport weight. Um, one, Grist is 1.71, kind of the same as the Cersei, Cersei's mini, mini skein. Um, but then when I measured the wraps per inch, I got 13. So yeah, I feel like wraps per inch is just kind of this unreliable, um, system. And like, maybe I'll find, I'll eventually narrow down my range and I can at least classify my yarns better. Um, but yeah, because, so the idea behind wraps per inch is that you're wrapping your yarn around a certain number and you're rolling it to avoid tension, but still as you're wrapping the yarn around, the yarn can stretch, the yarn can, the yarn can spread out or squish down. And that changes the, that changes the, um, you know, the number of wraps that would fit into an inch of this stick. So, I don't know. I'm kind of unhappy with that measurement. Anyway, um, the way I handled the colors in this braid, I did what, I, what I'm thinking of as a single bobbin fractal spinning. So, um, because the color contrasts weren't super stark in this, and I didn't, I wasn't caring too much about preserving the color repeats. Um, so in fractal spinning, you normally um, spin 
you normally divide your braid in half, split one half into thinner sections, and then spin the thin sections end to end and spin the thick se sections end to end. Um, what I did was I split the braid in half um, and I took my my thicker sections, spun them end to end, then the thin sec sections, flipped them around, also spun them onto the same bobbin with the uh, thick sections slash long color repeats. Um, and so that means, I think normally people don't do that for fractal spinning because they don't want the two halves to blend and they want to have control of that fractal colorway. Um, but I was happy just letting the colors do what they wanted. And I think it turned out really well. So, and also that means there were no leftovers. So I like that. And then what I'm working on now, um, is a, is also fiber from Three Waters Farm. I showed this last episode and so now you get to see them spun up. This, it, so far I have two mini skeins out of a four ounce braid, uh, from Three Waters Farm. Uh, their colorway is Mary Poppies. It's an organic Polworth top. Um, I have to say, I'm not really noticing a difference between the different kinds of, um, at least the, the finer wools since I've spun BFL, Merino, um, and now Polworth. I don't notice too much of a difference between them. I am looking forward to spinning some long wool that is coarser. And I mean, I started spinning with pretty coarse wool and I could feel the difference between that and a fine, a fine wool like Merino, but... Eh, maybe as I get more experience, I'll get more sensitive to the fineness of the wool. So, um, so far, I haven't measured the yardage on these, um, but it was a very highly uh, variegated skein, as you can see. I, when I saw the picture, I actually thought it was a gradient, starting with blue at one end and the red, yellow at the second end. But um, when I opened up the braid, it was actually, uh, it was... It was blue transitioning to red and yellow, but it was repeated over the braids, so that means that it's actually a variegated, well, it's kind of, it's a variegated uh, colorway, but I love those colors so much, I didn't want a lot of barber pulling, so I split, when I split the fiber into strips, I spun them the same direction and then plied them the same direction, trying to keep each color section together as they were plying. Um, but that's, and that's what I did for both of these skeins, and I, for, I didn't keep track of which one was the second one I did. The second one was definitely more even, um, and there was less barber pulling, so I spun it more consistently. But that's a fun project so far. I still have half the braid left. These are about one ounce each. I have a two ounce, I have two ounces of the braid, um, and I might do something different with that. But we'll see. That's all I have for spinning. And next, um, I have actually been getting stuff. So, uh, beyond just supplies for commissions. So, uh, let's go into On the Horizon. And also my acquired section. But, let's face it, I basically shop for projects. So, whatever I buy usually can go into a future projects planning kind of discussion. So let me start with last night. So last night, my friend Vincent, who is the knit owl, who also like just appeared on Christy Glass and he's, yeah, like local celebrity status there. Um, hi Vincent, if you're watching. Um, not, you're probably too busy, you have classwork and crap to deal with. Why am I going back to school? Like I see you dealing with that bullshit, but meh, eh, I'm a masochist. Okay, so Vincent um, took me to the local yarn store, um, as in the local yarn store, which is a new store that a new store that opened up in South Orange, New Jersey, which is a couple towns away from me, um, and a couple of towns away from Montclair. Um, so I think the two stores would be pretty complimentary. So check out both stores. And um, South Orange um, was a really cool store. They had couches. It was a it was definitely a different crowd. I mean, the towns, I feel like, don't do a lot of intermixing in New Jersey. People kind of just stay in the town that they live in. So there wasn't any overlap between the two knitting groups. So they have Friday night uh, knit nights. And the owner, Irina, is so cool. Um, I love her tattoos. I want to... <laughs> it makes me want to get more tattoos. But anyway, so 
Um, most of the bit was just sitting and knitting um, with people, but I did have to shop. And none of the brands that uh, she and Yarnia carry overlap, so I got to see some new stuff. And that's what I love about visiting different yarn stores. Like the owners will express their taste in some way and their customer base is going to be different. And that, you know, customizes, that will change what they stock. So this is the yarn I picked up. Uh, it is from Nooch Fiber, which is a, also a New Jersey dyer. New Jersey or New York? Crap, I forget. Um, but they are a, lo a local to me dyer um, that I've been meaning to try. Their logo is so cute. And the dyers were there. Um, Mariana and Nick were sitting and knitting with us. Um, and their cat, is, their, their cat's nickname is Nooch. That's why it's called that. Isn't that so cute? Um, so I fell in love with this olivey brown color. Um, and it's a DK weight. I've been buying way too much fingering weight and working with too much fingering weight. Um, I got this and I intend to make a hat and whatever mitts I can get out of it. It is their Inwood DK. It's 100% superwash merino four ply, 250 yards, lots of yards. Um, and it's the colorway Hawk Feather. I, this is, this is a pretty nice color. I would wear this to death. Um, but now it's getting warm. Oh, well. So, um, besides that, I originally just wanted to get that one skein, but then I saw that she had some neighborhood fiber company on sale, and that's also stuff I haven't tried before. Um, the yarn was super pretty, but I didn't have immediate ideas for it, but then I saw that she had some of their spinning fiber, and I definitely have ideas for these, so I got that. Um, and it was on sale too, so I'm like, oh, I can get two bags. These are two ounce bags of Merino and Tussa Silk Blend. Um, kind of, they're not batlings. I took one apart. It is, it seems like combed top more. Um, <laughs> tribbles. I'll look it up and see if it's a woolen or worsted prep. Um, but it's, I think it's dyed in collaboration with Hobbledy Hoy, which is also a dyer I've been meaning to try. And I think I'm going to do something similar with what I did with the Cersei skein which now that I look at it, kind of they overlap in color, where I spin um, one single with this bag, one single with this bag, and I apply them together. So yeah, that's what I got from the local yarn store. Um, and then I also picked up some fiber. This is for a spinning commission. Um, and it is more Sweet Georgia. Wow, that red is really blowing out. In real life, this looks like more of a muted cranberry. It's not super, super bright. Um, it is still saturated. It's a jewel tone. And this colorway is Oxblood. It's 100% superwash BFL. Um, and the only parameter I have so far is that this should turn out to be a worsted bulky. So um, more bulky than what I... A thicker yarn than what I have been spinning. So I'll just need to remember to use a different whirl um, in different ratio. And then the last thing that I have got is a, uh, was a gift. So the lovely Eve Walker, um, we know each other through the um, BK Virtual Knit Nights by Grace of Babel's Traveling Yarns. And she sent me this, so there was a giveaway and she sent me this braid of Lincoln wool, which is a long wool, so there's a very long staple. Um, I think this is this is probably top, and I've been looking forward to trying a different, very different kind of wool for a while. This is a long wool, so I I've spun Wensley doll before, but only on a spindle. So I'm looking forward to experimenting with this. She dyed this herself. It looks so good, actually. Kind of coordinating. Ooh, these two together in a project. Ooh, what about that? I think that might be a winner. I might do have to do like a hat and mitt set with coordinating with hand spun accents. Okay, so that is on the horizon slash acquired. Um, I wanted to have a brief life update section because I haven't talked about that in a while and I have alluded to traveling for grad school. So I have been applying, or I applied for grad school for PhD program specifically earlier this year. Um, I got a couple of offers. I got mostly rejections because they're competitive. Um, and 
they flew me out to visit the schools in the sciences. Most PhD programs will do that. And um, I've made a decision. I'm not going to go into too many details, but yeah, basically um, I accepted an offer at Colora uh, the University of Colorado Boulder or CU Boulder in Boulder, Colorado. So I'm going to be moving out there somewhere in this during the summer. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I was prepared to make a big move and this is it. Um, besides that, um, one thing that's been on my mind lately a lot is balancing work and life. Um, and in a different way than I've struggled with in the past. Like in college, my work was school, life was anything that was not school, and the work-life balance struggle there was just because I had a lot of work and not a lot of room for life. Now, I, I mean, I have more, generally I have more free time now that I've graduated and I'm not a student anymore. Um, and now that will change again, of course, because I'm going back to being a student. Um, but my work and my personal life are really related now because I work at a yarn store um, and I've turned part of what I do for fun into work. And it's it kind of came to a boiling point this week. Um, I was feeling like, oh my god, I can't even talk to people from my knitting group because they also go to the yarn store. And it's like, they... They're friends, but they're also customers, clients, and colleagues. Um, and it was getting really hard to even work on my personal projects and enjoy them and not feel like them being work. I was getting everything mixed up, and especially design projects, because that stuff is, you know, it's usually designed for me, but then I'm also writing up the patterns with the intent to monetize them. Um, so things are really blurry. Um, I think checking out a, a, like, meeting a lot of new knitters last night was kind of this breath of fresh air for me. Um, but maybe I just fall into a rut, um, with, in terms of just, like, working and not really going out to have fun. So, I'm gonna try to do a better job of separating, um, work projects and personal projects, do more selfish knitting like uh the like just my two at a time socks um but also just trying to find more joy in my designing i am definitely getting my design mojo back so and then the kind of work that i do when i'm designing is very anti-social i'm sitting at my computer and coding um i'm staring at a screen and maybe part of it is that my work now is also very social. Um, I do a lot of talking um, as a salesperson for yarn and then my other gig is tutoring and that's all talking. Um, and actually lately tutoring and yarn has been <laughs> has been overlapping even more because I am focused on instructions at, instruction at Yarnia and um, a lot of students lately have been coming in with math problems basically. <laughs> so things like gauge and yeah, and like, gauge, estimating how much yardage you need. It's math. So, yeah. I'm actually thinking of uh, recording, uh, making and recording um, simple math tutorials for knitters. Any input on that? Um, but yeah, I will just try to be better about being a little selfish with my knitting in a weird resolution to come up with. But uh, let's just go into wrap up on that note. Um, so uh, look forward to the spin along. If um, if you have any suggestions for it, just let me know. Um, comment on the YouTube video, PM me or post in the, PM me on Ravelry or post in the Ravelry thread, DM me on Instagram, however you want to reach me. Um, again, I'm Piper Nell pretty much everywhere. So whatever you want to reach me for, just search up Piper Nell. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm definitely trying to look for something low-key because that's also going to take place in the middle of my move. But hopefully it will be a lot less frantic than my and chaotic than my move out to New Jersey. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, and yeah, give me some input on future tutorials if you'd like those. I am building up a list of things to record um, that I keep meaning to. But I 
finally feel my energy coming back. My seasonal affective depression uh, disorder, affective disorder, my seasonal depression was really bad. I was sleeping like 10, 12 hours a day. And I finally feel my energy coming back and I'm able to wake up in the mornings. Um, or it could be a manic face, who knows. But yeah, um, so that's, I should just cut myself off before I ramble too much. So thank you so much um, for watching and listening. If you are a new viewer, uh, I hope you like that. You, stick you stuck around till the end. So please uh, like this video. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but I, besides that, I, I'm not looking for numbers here. I'd really love to meet you. So um, yeah, get in touch with me if you'd like to collaborate. Um, send me a message. And I just hope that your projects are going well and that you personally are doing well and that, you know, this change in seasons is going well for you. So happy knitting, spinning, crafting. Just have a great rest of your day. Bye. Oh, hey. oops. Oh, that's the yarn.